entire Caribbean because the Sabbath and the carries 750 beds. So, Honorable Minister, it is to you I look, sir, today to share my thoughts and to tell you in all honesty, sir, that health services at the San Fernando General Hospital have unquestionably deteriorated under your watch and your stewardship as Minister of Health. There's no question about that in my mind. And the patients, the patients are undergoing trials and tribulations, terrors and horrors such as they have never gone through before. But you see, you made two serious blunders, Honourable Minister. The first was, the first was, the initiative, the revolutionary initiative which your predecessor had put on the San Fernando chicken, which was to have a number on the walls of the hospital that patients can call when they have a problem. That initiative has been shut down. And secondly, you did not understand, Honourable Minister, and as I said to you before, I don't want to hear about no board. I want to hear about no bed and board and, and fly, but I want to hear about no board. At the end of the day, Honourable Minister, you call the shots. The box stops with you. And that, incidentally, was what John Rahel said in a little pamphlet that he had printed in 2005. The box stops with the Minister of Health. You do call the shots. You can say who you want as a CEO and who you want as the medical director. You made a bad choice. You put the wrong person in the position of medical director at the San Fernando General Hospital, sir. And I can tell you for a fact, sir, that this, in this situation, you need a medical director who cares about the people, who will listen to the people, who is willing to meet the patients and their relatives, and who is willing to harness doctors who feel they can do what they like. Because doctors, some of the doctors in the hospital are not even seeing patients with referral letters. And some of the doctors are giving the patients a very rough time. Now let me share it very quickly, and I won't be long, Rohit. I won't be long. Last point. Right. On I want to say very quickly, right. sir. The terrors and, and the horrors that the patients are facing, number one, the patients have to put their hands in their pocket and buy drugs for their eye surgery. There are no local anesthetic. They cannot get their eye surgery. They have to buy their own lenses. There's no vitro-retinal service. The doctors are not aware of what to happen with vitro-retinal surgeries. Patients have to pay $30,000 per eye to have vitro-retinal surgery. They have to put money in their pockets. They have to put their hands in their pockets to buy drugs that are not available in the hospital. They have to pay for tests that are not available at the hospital because the SWRH does not have money to purchase, to purchase the reagents and so on to, for the drugs, for the tests. So they have to pay for the tests privately. Endoscopy services. They have to pay $1,500 to get an endoscopy service. Well, you know what? That $90,000 that your colleague, the Minister of Sport, spent in Tobago, that money could have paid for 60 Doctor, patients to have endoscopy. Doctor, let's keep it focused. Okay. No endoscopy uh, services for one year have not been available. For one year, and yet, uh, we are paying, you are paying, you are paying a gastroenterologist when the hospital is not providing consultant gastroenterology services. And I'm finished. Do you, do you mind writing me all this? Right, one minute, go ahead, I'm almost finished. The overcrowding is a serious problem, Mr. Minister, at the San Fernando General Hospital. Be at the SWRH, I was once there. I've written two papers on this, saying you've got 230 beds sitting in the Coover Hospital. That will go a long way to alleviating the overcrowding. Use the MRI scanner. It's a three test for MRI. You can clear up the hundreds of patients who are waiting for MRIs. The waiting list for MRIs is about 500 patients. The three Tesla is faster than the 1.5 Tesla, and you can do a lot with it. As Thank I you. leave you, Mr. Minister, and I finish with it. Oh, yeah, yes, I, yeah. I'm finished. You're finished. I'm almost. I want to say to you, Mr. Very Minister, much. patients are having a rough time at the hospital. They have to pay for too many things. And, sir, if you do not look into this and you do not address this issue, then know this. There will be, the patients will continue to suffer. And because they do not have the wherewithal, to spend their money to buy all these things, 
many we not here to defend the minister. However, I must state, I don't think the minister was even aware uh. that your number was on the walls and has been removed. That was a board decision and I can explain. Um, while having a number on the wall, uh. the idea in terms of the patient being able to call someone uh, doesn't fix the system. And the thing is, as a board, we're here to try to fix the, the, the system. But Alex, so, you, you replaced it with 87 Swara, and that does not work. Dr. Chapman, what happens if, God forbids, something happens to you tomorrow and you can't answer your phone? You don't phone? understand, Alex. You don't understand. So that's why I've been... a number that people can call. 87 Swara does not work. So the answer is, you know, we are trying, we were trying to fix the system so someone is available all the time to take those calls and deal with the patient. It's the patient that matters. The second point is I take your... I mean, as the minister, you know, the minister, as I just said, the minister is probably not even, was not aware that oh. your number was up or had been removed. Then, okay, well, having, yeah. having said that, uh, uh, moving me. on to the lack of endoscopy services. Professor, uh, please. Yeah, I'm listening. Lack of endoscopy services, the board is well aware of this. The endoscopes are, are, have, you know, are old, it's old equipment and we are actually in the process of procuring for new endoscopes as a matter of urgency. If, just, just if I can state publicly, Dr. Chattagun has made me aware of many issues and every single issue um, I take on board and I actually try to deal with it. Practically raising the point, should I be an executive chairman? I sometimes wonder because every um, every point you know comes to me and I try to sort it out. And the scopes we're procuring for the scopes. In the interim, we have asked one of our fellow RHAs because at the end of the day we're one country. If they can assist, if our gastroenterologist can go to that RHA and therefore our patients can get the endoscopy, so they don't have to fork out money. With respect to the vitreoretinal services. Um, your point um, raises is quite relevant because it in part in the second part of the Welsh Committee's report it talks about specialists who um, work privately only or whether they should work in the public system. The fact is, Dr. Jatagun, we have three specialized vitreoretinal surgeons in the country. As I mean, I'm not here to talk figures, but two operations, as you've just said, is more than that what they, we can pay them as a monthly salary. Therefore, none of them is willing to work in the public system full time. However, in recognition of the fact that in South Trinidad we have a high incidence of diabetes and complications of diabetes, for which vitreoretinal surgery is often required, I have actually engaged in discussions with one of the vitreoretinal surgeons because San Fernando Hospital is the only hospital that actually has the equipment to do vitreoretinal surgery. That surgeon is actually willing to offer us his services in that he will do one operation, operating list per week and at a nominal cost. Uh, the same cost that we have paid uh, other specialists and not have full time on staff. The person is doing it really, we are giving back to the people of South Trinidad. And essentially we're at the stage where we need to sign a memorandum of understanding and that will hopefully take place within the next month. I'm hoping that by the middle of June we can get something started. This is my job. This is my job. Under this minister, under this board, there's always hope on the horizon. All right. Every, every point you've made, we are, we are dealing with it. Um, in terms of the... Uh, about the, the, the lack of drugs and the reagents, that was something that we encountered when we first came in. As you are quite aware, finances are always a challenge. The other thing that you're saying is, you know, we have been looking at managing our finances better. And if you, in our public board meeting, I talked about trimming the fat, trying to tighten the systems so that there's less wastage. 
And just, just, I mean, you, you got a little bit personal in your comments about the hiring of the medical director, etc. <laughs> but the Honourable Minister had absolutely no idea and not involved at all the hiring or firing of any doctors, including the medical director. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sennan. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kyron Ramu. I was a former quality auditor or quality auditor assistant at the Southwest Regional Health Authority. And um, while doing my audits, part of our audits is to make corrective action plans and give recommendations. So while doing many audits, I came across things that intersected. One biggest issue at the San Fernando General Hospital is the question of infrastructure. What saddened me is that this country has went through two oil booms and San Fernando General Hospital is yet to be refurbished. Staff at RAC 1 or Regional Administration Center 1 and 2 and BMQ building which is a fire hazard right now. I personally know this. They are sitting there, they're making their complaints. I know the board is tight with money, but how are you going to fix these areas? My issue with the teaching hospital, I know it was originally an administrative complex of ministries, and it was repurposed as a hospital. Now, some people were for it, some people were against it. I am for the idea of it turning into a hospital. I think the execution was done badly because it created new problems. I'm not coming here to boss Sora Files. If you want to know more about that, you can talk to my former boss, Mr. Ramjit Right? Um, next issue, another issue with San Fernando is space and electrical issues. There's a shortage in radiology labs which are interfering with the air conditioning units with iClinic and also with the equipment that doctors would not use if they have shortages. They will stop seeing patients and go home. Another issue is the protection of data. I've seen leaking of sensitive information from the CEO office, from the boards of directors to lower my, uh, members of staff. I have seen board notes. I have seen people taking pictures and posting them on Facebook groups. Solution to that is that some type of program should be installed that whenever someone inserts a USB drive, it will log to know whose profile it was on and what information has been sent to it. Another issue is computers. Every time I do audits, a lot of them have some problem with the computers and they have to lodge things on paper. It needs to have new computers in a lot of the departments and some departments need new programming like HR and internal audit and quality audit. They need new programs to do what they need to do. They cannot be this paper thing whole time and Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel could only do so much. Another thing is the training of some of the doctors. What I have seen is that we like to give training to nursing and daily pay and quality and protective services. But when it's time for the doctors to take certain training, they're not coming. It could be for two reasons. Number one, they don't have the time. Because when they start work, they're just going. Another reason is that they think they are too good to take those training. I am going to Preston School, I is a big doctor, why I going and take these stupid courses for? Right? And then they talk to members of staff anyhow. Some of these doctors, they were bright enough to pass a paper, but, and to be a doctor, but their purpose in life was not to be doctors, because then they eventually get frustrated and take it out on other members of staff, such as Nelson and their patients. Okay, Mr. Ramroop, may I uh, 
Let us check a little bit. You have given us a long list of issues. Perhaps I choose to send that to us. I will. Uh, email it um, for the email address is myhealthcare at health.gov.tt. You got that? Yeah, but um, I audited that also. Eh? about communication. That was the last point of Okay, well, we, you got it. You're hitting the nail on the head. So could you send those things for us, please? But wait, just, wait, hold on. One no, more. No, 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 wait. One we, more. One we, more point. We've indulged you for a long time. We have a whole lot of people who would like to speak. So could you please send your solution to us? The chairman would give you a brief response. Yes, with, with, with respect to the information technology and the use of it, um, yes. We recognize that we have not been using IT as much as we should be. For example, an HR information system is right. something that we've invested in as a board, right. and we'll be introducing that um, very soon. Right. Similarly, in audit, we are uh, actively pursuing IT solutions to sort of um, improve our efficiency. Um, infrastructure. I'll ask Mrs. Me just to address yes, the infrastructure. I'm going to just to address some of your infrastructural uh, comments. The RAC1 and RAC2 are currently, we're currently uh, looking at refurbishing those two um, facilities. Um, the tender has gone out and so um, hopefully work will start very soon. Um, concerning the San Fernando General Hospital, you will understand that it is a aged facility. And because it is a live environment, there is only so much refurbishment you can do per year. And so we currently have a program of books that is going on where we're treating ward by ward. Um, a part of that though is really finding space to decant certain facilities, certain wards, and then refurbish. So those works are ongoing and they have, we have made a um, we have asked the ministry to help us to carry on um, some of that through funding. So we are looking at that um, eagerly. Yeah? Thank you very much. Can we move on to the next speaker? Um, Dr. Doon, may I just okay. um, Hi. help out my colleague here a little bit? Over the past few years, very little attention was paid to the upgrade and upkeep of our health facilities. Priorities laid elsewhere, and that is fine. Since becoming Minister of Health, and I don't know if you are paying attention to the newspapers, you will see under my watch, I am responsible for everything. You will see under my watch, each RHA almost every day has a tender out for something. And if you pay attention to what we are tendering for, it's upgrade of electrical services. It's to provide new medical equipment. The focus is not only on buildings, but as Minister of Health, when I hear the complaints coming from the boards, we started to refocus last year for this fiscal year, and you will see almost every ROG tendering now for electrical upgrades, new refrigeration units. Because how do you store vaccines if you don't have the proper refrigeration units. You would see tenders now today under ERHA for new dental equipment for the health centers in Rio Claro, Mayaro, and a lot of the rural areas. Because as I said, dental has been the ugly duckling of the health system. I don't know if you were here to hear me say that. And we are now paying serious attention to those issues. So I want to assure you, as you pay attention to what we are tendering for, it is not only bells and whistles, but it's key infrastructural needs that have to support the clinical services. So I want to give you the assurance, like the uh, CEO said, we are not fixing those same two buildings that have been dilapidated for years because we are paying attention to the nuts and bolts of the healthcare system. Okay. Can I make one more quick point? No. 
Um, the last point I wanted to make was communication. Because there are lower, mem lower levels, members of staff in the organizational structure have many um, recommendations, but it never reaches to the top for whatever reason. Right. So I hope for that to happen. Let me tell you how I, as minister, am dealing with that. And I have one chairman of Southwest, uh, another chairman of uh, North Central, and they will tell you that last week, last week Wednesday, I called in all four chairmen of the Trinidad RHAs. And you know what I told them? It is time for the executive management team of each RHA to start to walk the floors. Very good. And start to listen. Did I not say that? Exactly. And start to listen to the stakeholders. And I make the point. I said, I do not have an MBA. What I have is an MW, MBWA, management by walking around. And I give each chairman the mandate that the executive team from CEO, CEO, director of HR, director of finance, everyone should have its mandate to walk the floors and listen to people. Because that is where you get the ideas, that is where the pain points lie, and in my opinion, people like yourself have been ignored for too long. And that was a mandate, a policy decision taken by the Minister of Health last week, Wednesday, when I called them into an emergency meeting to discuss several issues, and that was one. Nice. Okay? Thank you very so much. So I give you the assurance that will happen. Thank you. Could you give yeah. us your name and where you're from, please? My name is Ermila Anamantugo Bistad. <laughs> I was a nurse trained at San Fernando General Hospital and worked at the hospital for 33 years. I worked on the district for 12 more years, which I'm now retired and home. On the 8th of January, unfortunately, I had a heart attack. I went to the hospital and the doctors and nurses in casualty at that point in time did see about me urgently, which I'm quite thankful for. Went to the ward, I was supposed to get an echo done. When the card went down to the echo department, it came back up and said I wouldn't get an appointment until November. Sorry, the doctor who was seen about me asked me if I wouldn't mind doing it privately. I am sick, I want to know what's wrong with me, I want to know what is to be done, and I have to discharge and go home and do it privately, pay $800 to get it to go back to the clinic. After that, the doctor recommended an angiogram. The letter was written by the doctor, it was sent to the um, hospital medical director, it was sent by the social worker up to the ministry, because they handled that aspect of it. And it was sent back down to the social worker who wanted my bank statement. Now, after working for that length of time, am I not supposed to have a little bit of something to tide me through the rest of my life? When it went back up, I waited six weeks and then not hearing anything. When I called last week, I was told that I have to do that on my own. I can't afford it. So on Monday, I went to Sinclair Medical Center for a consultation with the doctor, and I have to go on Friday, next week Friday, for the angiogram. I have to pay. I don't mind paying to know what is wrong with me, right? I want my, but I find after working all these years, I left the service without even my much as a thank you card for your service. That is to tell you how terrible the whole system, I was transformed from Ministry of Health to Regional Health. I work with both sectors. Another thing is last year I had a daughter who was an oncology patient. She went to casualty. She spent from 3 p.m. to 7 a.m. the following morning to get a bed on a ward. I was there with her. The security guard come to me and tell me I can't stay with her. I, I didn't tell him who I am. 
I just tell him, I say, sir, I'm not leaving her. That is my child and that is my daughter. She had morphine and she's on a, a stretcher out on the corridor. I said, don't make a mistake to put your hand on me. Right? I told him that in no uncertain terms. So I have been, I have plenty other experiences. Because while I was in casualty the, the night, the evening, um, I was for an ex chest x-ray. I spent more than an hour on a stretcher. No attendant to take me. The, the radiologist calling. Nobody to push the stretcher with me on it. When I did see an attendant and I told her that I have to get an extra, they're looking for me. She said, Why did I come and carry you for the cell? <coughs> so, I mean, after working so long, and that is the attitude, I never give people that kind of attitude when I work. Because our time was a different time. It was okay, an entirely different time. So, after working so long, that is attitude I get from me. I'm going to call them the attendants. The attendant in casualty have no training. When my daughter was in casualty from about 8, 9 o'clock, not an attendant around. Until minutes to 7 in the morning, then they come. Where the final bed 7 o'clock in the morning to put on. You couldn't find that all evening, all night. But at 7 o'clock in the morning, they come to push up to our bed. Because at one time I had to ask if I had to go to court so I am in for her to lie down. Thank you, Mrs. Bisnat. Uh, perhaps you would allow the chairman to briefly respond. The lines that are coming in is that, uh, you know, how do you get your staff to care for the patients? You know, one of the things we've looked at is through our quality department, we've been working throughout all levels of staff to try to get staff to at least. Uh, realize that they're dealing with patients who are debilitated and sick and need that little extra bit of sympathy and empathy. Something that we've been emphasizing throughout, um, especially throughout our quality department and with, with, you know, we've been trying to introduce programs for all levels of staff. Um, just with regard to the issue of um, having to have an angiogram, etc. One of the things that we are currently and actively looking at is the construction or the install, installation of a cardiac catheterization suite. Unfortunately, when we came into office, uh, specifications had been drawn up for a cardiac catheterization suite, but the quotation uh, that was provided was exorbitant. And I actually did some homework, having spoken to cardiologists in other regions, Currently, this quotation was approximately twice the price that we could actually get a cardiac catheterization suite for. So, having discussed it with the Honorable Minister, he gave me a mandate to go back out and get a, get basically get a user brief for a, a cardiac suite at a much lower price. And we're actually in the process of doing that and we're consulting our colleagues around the country before we go forward. So. I accept that you know we don't have cardiac catheterization facilities in the south of Trinidad. Um, however, we recognize that with a large diabetic population with uh, the NCDs, we need to provide um, that service. At the same time, we're also tackling it from the point of view at, at the NCD level, trying to get our NCD uh, numbers and figures under control. Thank you. Can we have on um, just just. No, you can have to sit down. Um, I just want to make the point. The last part of Chairman's contribution and what I said and what the Welsh Committee said is that if we do not, as a society, understand the burden of NCDs on the country, and not take drastic measures now. I said it before and I'll say it again. A future Minister of Health will come here in 10 years and 15 years and you will have the same complaint coming from the floor. You don't have enough catheterization labs. You don't have enough 
facilities that amputate legs because this never-ending cycle of treatment-based reactive medicine has to stop. And I was so disappointed when I throw the question, are you fed up here me talking about NCDs? And I got one person saying yes. If this country does not wake up to the fact that if you do not manage your NCDs, it has the capacity to bankrupt the healthcare system, you will be doing your children and your grandchildren a great disservice. We cannot go on pretending that the country and the state should be providing an unlimited amount of medication and services to deal with uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled hypertension, uncontrolled high cholesterol, strokes, cardiovascular incidents. No country in the world can provide enough resources for that reactive treatment-based model. And what the young lady is speaking about and what Dr. Sinanen is speaking about, yes, we have to provide those services now. But if we don't come to grips with the crisis that we are in, in 20 years, another minister will come here and you will hold him to account why we are not providing more hospital beds, more cash services, more insulin, more this, more that. Because as a society, we are not healthy. Our lifestyle that we have adopted, our diets that we have adopted, is now breeding children in our schools where obesity rates have gone up by 400% in 10 years. As the Minister of Health being held responsible for everything, it pains me when I visit the dialysis centers to now see children, children as young as 17, with chronic end-stage renal disease, obese and diabetic, who have to be dialyzed for the rest of their natural lives. Forget the cost to the state of $130,000 to dialyze a patient. What about the quality of life of that young person at age 17? What about the quality of life of his parents and his siblings who have to take him to be dialyzed, who have to take time off from work, and therefore the productive capacity of society is dropping. Friends, I do not know if you understand. There's a movie called The Perfect Storm. We are in the perfect storm of our NCD crisis. Join with the Ministry of Health and starting to put concrete, hard measures in place to break that cycle for the generation behind you. If some of you can benefit from it now by changing your lifestyle. But please, I urge you, I beg you, that Trinidad and Tobago is a ticking time bomb of NCDs and no government in the world, regardless of the price of oil, will be able in 10 years, 20 years, to provide the amount of services you will require to treat with it. Resources all around the world are finite. We can't build a hospital bed next to your home. I'm sure every single one of you has a friend, a parent, a grandmother suffering from some sort of NCD. If we are honest, my family passed through that. We have a crisis. Let us deal with it decisively, if not for your generation, for your children and your grandchildren's sake. I beg of you.
Thank you, Minister. Um, just to add a little bit to what the Minister said. How can you about the adverse economic impact of diabetes and hypertension? That is the annual impact. Is it a region of $6 billion? And that's what the Inter-American Developmental Bank conducted a study and informed the Ministry. So, direct costs plus productivity losses cost this country in the region of $6 billion every year. The budget of the Ministry of Health is $6 billion, so here we go. We have nothing, we can't treat anything else. But the Minister is absolutely correct. So we will take our next speaker there, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Welcome, especially from uh, to San Fernando uh, on this African Liberation Day. Today is African Liberation Day. Hello to Dr. Sinan and Kyakir. Um, and it's a long time we haven't met us. Adversaries on television, but that will come. Um, I am speaking here as an ordinary rum shop plebeian. Um, I think so. A philosopher, rather. No, a, a rum shop plebeian. So um, I'm, I just jump on. Um, Philip, my cookie doctor. I'm also come after Alana, who's also from Cookie. Um, first of all, uh, uh, I would like to say that hearing this, and Dr. Sinan and you would know, that I've been going to all the SWRHA meetings that we've had. And a lot of the same stuff has come up here. So I get the impression that certainly Dr. Welsh and company must have read and followed up what the SWRHA had been putting forward. Because it's the same sort of things that have been coming on. I have, I have no special interest. I hope to get whatever benefit the whole of Trinidad would get. I would rise with the tide like everybody else. But there are one or two things that you know come into mind. I noticed uh, a little point that um, the minister made about going in somewhere I was so happy with the attention he got from the attendant. Was it that he was saying? The security guard. Oh, no, the sec yes. And that was good. And Dr. Sunny, remember, I made the point that most people, their contact with the, with the health services is a one and all thing. You go, you get served, however you get it, whenever you get it, and when you finish, well, you say, who after me is the catch? But in fact, Anybody who goes and has any, any, any experiences with the health services will know that on average, especially if you had to go to surgery, you, have, you make contact, face-to-face -face contact, with about 70 different people from the security guard that you talk about. Before, sometimes before him, is the attendant at the car park before you get to leave. So there are a, that whole range of people, and anything uh, could go wrong along that line. I just thought about that. So that I would say, to start with, that SWRHA, we are going, we are going to SWRHA, and some of the main points, and all the little irritations, we have gone over that from time to time. But I remember the last one, I can say something, but I know we get some support for that. The last, the, the problem always with the, 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 the SWRHA would end up with, the question of finance. We don't have enough money to do it. And there's no means of raising any money because they have to wait until, I would say the minister, the party minister, till the government, <laughs> till, the, till the cabinet, till the budget people allocate something down here because we can't do anything and the SWRH board are all appointees by the government. Nobody elected them. So they, whilst, they're, whilst they're a local body, they're, they're not an elected local body to fight for us and that kind of thing. And they have no responsibility as such to the population. As such, their population, they have responsibility to those who name them there. So we do have that. That point is about the, about, about the funds. They don't have fun, enough funds to do that. They put out what they want to do each year. Make a budget, make a request. A wish list, and then they have to depend on what they get from government. And there, they are, they are commended in so far as how they can be cost-effective, how well they can spend that money, and that is a job in itself. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Could you? Uh, I don't think the SWRHA is unique in that regard. Not not only within the health sector. Each RHA needs to make representation for finances, but across the board. Right. So, the the board. WRHA is the same thing. All, 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 all of them. Right. I agree. So, I, agree. I mean, what our role is, at least what I, you know, part of our role is to make representation based on what we have seen, you know, in the RHA as to. We have to, obviously we have to prioritize, and you know some years will be better than others in terms of uh, how much finances we get. Uh, but obviously it is our role to prioritize and to determine you know which things we think are the most important things that we you know we need to allocate the funding for and to. Yeah, well, I was going to blame on you because it happens all around, and, and that's a yeah. problem. And that's a problem we face here, and that is where the responsibility falls on on us, the people, to you, make some noise. And, I was and, about to ask, and, do you and, have a solution? And, and, and well, I, I told you that the last time, Dr. Bodo mentioned that. Make some we, noise. We have to do, and have to advocate, and have to make some noise. Not wait until for Alan and I alone come here to talk about with ordinary people, because we do have that problem. And if people do not do that well, we'll take what we get, you know? Okay, could you... Um, and, and, could no, you... Could you the, the time is running by, and we've got a few folks and, behind you there. Could you allow them to have a few but, words with us, please? Yeah, let me, let me just finish up. No, we have, we have, look, we have about four people lined up. So, thanks, thanks, thanks. Write us, write us. Could you allow the other speaker to come forward? First, let me, uh, yes, publicly acknowledge what the health minister has been doing over the last year and a half. I am a benefactor of actually seen some of the work he's doing and he's focusing on the important thing, policy, which is what the Minister of Health is responsible for and not on the organizational aspect, which is the For me first, and of um, course, what I heard earlier already got me a little upset. And also let me thank SWRHA as the only RHA has been holding public board meetings. The only RHA has been holding public board meetings. And that is a way of unaccountability which the Minister spoke to. So let me just touch on two quick excuses. The healthcare financing, and you already stated it's impossible for us to continue um, financing persons, lifestyle, a lifestyle of unhealthy living, and then expect the government to give them free healthcare. It's impossible, so we have to find ways to do healthcare financing. One solution is what St. James Medical has been doing in their NCRH department, where they go for radiation, um, at private institutions and persons with health insurance actually pay part and the government pay part. So that could be rolled out short because there are a number of persons with health insurance, probably 10 to 20% in the, in the, in the um, country. So those who have the ability to pay should pay. Um, another issue, well, the whole Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex mo model that they have when they start, they actually have a whole structure of um, calculating cost. This could be um, re-evaluated and rolled out because when Eric Williams came on the scene, they were the model healthcare system and now well, we know where they are. Um, well, I have many more to say, but it will be time to run out of the video. Hey, thank you. This, this, uh, let me stop here. This is our last speaker. We have a couple more minutes and then we have to wrap up. My name is Philip Ayogji. Um, just to respond to my former nurse colleague over there, one of the things we have to change in this country is our attitude to each other. We treat our fellow Trinbegonian with scant courtesy and disrespect. Depends on which side of the desk you are standing today or tomorrow. So unless we treat each other with respect, that's what's going to happen. Um, so we have come here to another meeting. Another report, we say the same thing, it is time for implementation. Get the work done and let's get the corrections. It is quite clear that the political management instituted by the RHA since 1996 have failed and have continued to fail. We need to look for non-political administrators who will do the job. And I noticed with Coover, they start looking now at a private-public partnership. 
But I'm asking, we, I am sure we can find Trinbegonians who can do the job without a political alignment. We do not need a foreigner, and worse yet, my voice, I don't want another white foreigner. We can do the job. Find us, get us to do the job without political alliance. And I noticed when I looked at the website last two weeks, I saw there was only one article on it, which was on private practice. Each time you talk about healthcare, doctors' private practice is also mentioned to sidetrack all the issues. But I'll address that towards the end. Now, my quick points are one, we need proper management. Or should I say, correct the mismanagement and stick it this now. Okay? I am I'm not surprised when I looked at those figures, the I work is Eric Williams, to see that Eric Williams is the non-productive hospital in the system. I'm not surprised. I have written many letters on it. I've got nowhere. And I know I will get nowhere. It's not productive. I believe go so far as saying that all those management companies, if you want to learn about mismanagement, Come into Eric Williams Medical Science Complex. I see that quite clear. I know Mr. Delas is here, David Thomas is here. Uh, I see that quite clear. Second, cut the corruption. Cut the corruption. Okay? Everybody know that I was hungry out of Southwest because I was a man. And the only person who suffered. My boss in the was me, Philip Ayotte. I went to court to fight it. Government of Trinidad, the Ministry of Health, and the Southwest Regional Health Authority paid the fees for the other part. And when I questioned, or well, everybody know, I like to write letters. When I questioned booklets of allegations I got, each reply under the Freedom of Information, Southwest Regional Authority has no knowledge of this issue. So you suspended me with a book of allegations and you have no knowledge was in that document. Okay? No knowledge, but I get suspended. Poor infrastructure. The infrastructure has been deteriorated and nobody has took the time to correct it. At North Central, or should I say Eric Williams, yeah, it's supposed to be fueled by four chillers with air conditioning. One spoiled, three working, nobody cared. Two spoiled, two working, nobody cared. Three spoiled, one working, nobody cared. Four spoiled, none working, nobody cared. What was the solution? Somebody decided to bring fan and window air conditioning units. So we now have an electrical problem. So when radiology took me not working, nobody ever asks, is the ventilation system in there adequate? Nobody asks. Inadequate and outdated equipment and technology. I started work here in November 2009. My first letter was in October 2009. Eight years later, 65 letters, I'm still waiting for one piece of equipment. One piece of equipment. And I operate today by cutting a patient, putting the patient in the hospital ward for a week, giving them three months sick leave, sometimes six months sick leave. Okay, um, I fear that we have to go in the next minute or two. So let me give you the website again, myhealthcare at health.gov.tt. We'd love to hear from you, doctor. Uh, I'm not writing, I'm not. No, we, we, we've got to cut that. Uh, Minister, could you wrap up, please? And Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for a very robust afternoon. I must say thank you for the recommendations. I think we have to get a written very submission. Speaker. What these consultations will do now is not only food for thought, but we are now going to feed some of your ideas and thoughts 
So Ms. Goodrich spoke about the possibility of having executive managers. That's the type of solution we want to hear. Is that a solution? The one topic that we did not touch, which I was hoped was going to be touched, so I'm hoping it is handled in Tobago, and I don't know why everybody evaded it, is the issue of public-private practice for doctors. This is the second consultation where we have had no recommendation, no thoughts from the floor. And just like the Welsh Committee could not have a unanimous position, we need to hear from you. What are your thoughts? And this was studiously avoided for the second consultation in a row. But we will have another bite at that particular cherry at the Joint Select Committee before the Parliament. So having said that, and as we wrap up, I want to thank everyone for coming out this afternoon. I want to thank you for your ideas, for your thoughts, for your complaints. Because the only way we can improve is if we know where we are falling short. But I want to wrap up this session by going back to what I said in the Senate, in opposition, in my contribution on the Children's Life Fund Bill. I told the then minister, you will get absolutely clobbered in the newspaper for every little thing that goes wrong. But you will not be praised for the hundreds and thousands of little miracles that this system provides every day and every year. Having said that, there is always room for improvement. And if you partner with us at the ministry, we will do our bit. But as one of my slides said, you have to take care of yourselves so you are not a burden to yourself, your families, and then expect catheterization services, open heart surgery. We want to prevent. We want to change the paradigm so that eventually we can move to live the slogan of the Ministry of Health, a healthy me, a healthy you, a healthy TNT. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your for this afternoon. Thank you and have a safe day.
did not have a unanimous position.
why it's moving in. It doesn't really make much 